Hi, and welcome to this second in a two-part series on how to fix the top 10 bad writing habits. In part one, we covered nominalization, expletives, B verbs, weak modifiers, and the dreaded deadwood. This video finishes off with five more of these tips. Okay, here we go. First, try this fix. Avoid negative statements. And here's why. Writing, whether it's business writing or academic writing, really does benefit when the positive is emphasized. Now, this has nothing to do with optimism or the sunny side. Here, we're talking about positive declarative statements that make your writing more definitive and more clear. There's this little 40-page book called The Elements of Style that I think everyone should have a copy of. The authors, Stroke and White, point out the difference between a sentence like, he was not on time very often, which contains that negative, and the sentence, he usually arrived late, which is a positive declarative statement. The first is less clear and less definitive. Struck and White also provide this example. He did not think studying Latin was much use. And compare that to, he thought the study of Latin useless. <laughs> which is more definitive? Which has a stronger point of view? You see, the point is this. Academic writing should be strong. It should be to the point. And positive statements communicate that you know the facts. You have a clear viewpoint. Now, here are some common ways that that negative not sneaks into our writing and, I think, undermines it. First, not is often found along with expletives such as it there. For example, it's not that we're ungrateful for all you've done for us. However, that sounds wildly insincere and wishy-washy to say the least. Is there gratitude or not? A clearer, more definitive statement goes ahead and eliminates that not. We're grateful for all you've done for us. However, you see, that is clearer, more definitive, more professional. Next category. Nots are often found with helping verbs. For example, the researchers did not consider alternative explanations. In this case, you delete the not along with the helper verb, and that in turn gives you the ability to give the sentence a strong active verb. The researchers ignored alternatives, or the researchers disregarded alternatives. Again, I highly recommend the synonym finder as a valuable tool during your revision process, which is what we're talking about here. Finally, and this is a really important case too, whenever you're giving instructions, that positive declarative statement is almost always going to be better understood and more accurately followed. For example, don't use the A12 form when reporting overtime. You almost have to have a positive statement like use the A24 form for instruction to, to be that instruction to be complete. Okay. Next writing tip, limit the distance between the subject and the verb. Why, you may ask? Why? Well, that's a good question, and the answer is important. Because the very basic unit of virtually all English is that subject, verb, and in that order. This one pattern, subject, verb, object, such as Jackie kicked the football, accounts for the majority of sentences in English, the vast majority. So the closer the subject and the verb can stay together, the clearer your sentence will be. Look at these revision strategies. First, you can move any of these intervening words to the front or end of the sentence. For example, at the sole discretion of the elective executive board can be moved to the end and provide a much clearer statement by keeping that subject-verb pair together. The club may continue. Subject-verb pair. 
A second issue is called noun packing uh, or info packing. Uh, and this, I have to admit, is the most common problem I find in the writing of non-native speakers of English. In other words, sentences that are just too long because the key is to remember the basic structure of English, subject, verb, object. And as a writer, all you need to do is to master that structure and then repeat it in short, clear sentences. Here's an example. A claim, which in the case of negligent misconduct, shall not exceed $500, and in the case of intentional conduct, shall not exceed $1,000, may be filed with the office of the administrator by an injured party. Those are two very different ideas in that sentence. Where to file the claim and the amount the claim should be. They therefore deserve two sentences where the subject-verb pair are clearly connected. In our next tip, we're going to look at eliminating unnecessary prepositions. Did you know the Chicago manual style, which is often called, for better or for worse, the Bible of American publishing, really only recommends one preposition for every 10 to 15 words. For example, here's a 10-word sentence with two prepositions. The rookie politician responded to the unfounded allegations with great anger. Now, following the Chicago rule, one of those prep prepositions has got to go. So you would write, the politician responded angrily to the allegations. Without that extra preposition, it's clearer and stronger. Now, in this next example, I want you to notice how this 10-word statement, she was disturbed by the violent images in the movie, gain impact when you eliminate that last preposition. She was disturbed by the movie's violent images. And I want you to note that making a noun possessive to avoid a prepositional phrase is a common technique for eliminating these excessive prepositional uh, strings. For example, here's another one. The number of wasp survivors after spraying was a reflection of the potency of the chemical. That's a very common kind of academic construction that you're going to see, but it can be easily reduced to the number of wasp survivors after spraying reflected the chemical's potency. You see how making a noun possessive allows you to avoid that prepositional string. Now, one revision tip that you've no doubt heard probably too often is this one. Delete redundant words. Unfortunately, that advice is usually given without huh? the other advice that helps you identify exactly what words are redundant and what aren't. Happy to oblige. The first category is words that work well in speech, but they become redundant when they're written. And I want you to keep in mind that it's natural for us to use double words in speech to emphasize our, our point. As a matter of fact, that's why we say bye-bye instead of just bye. Okay, so here's an example from academic writing. The professor's instructions were full and complete. Okay, sounds great, but what's the difference between full and complete? One or the other will do just fine in the kind of colder, more analytic world of writing. Same for this sentence. The academic library offered various and sundry articles on the European Renaissance. It just so happens that sundry literally means a variety. So when it's written, various and sundry, it's redundant. However, various and sundry is a speech idiom that's been around for decades, and it is perfectly fine for speech, but not in writing. Sometimes the doubling or the redundancy is implied in the word choice. For example, Gore-Tex fabric has completely revolutionized cold weather sports. Completely 
is actually implied in the word choice revolution, which means uh, fundamental or sweeping changes. But again, saying completely revolutionize, that serves as well as an intensifier in speech. Here's another one. Each individual fill in the blank. That is one that is often used in academic writing especially. But again, it just doesn't work that well in writing. Each individual student must submit a copy of the presentation that is redundant because the word each refers to individual members of a group. So one of those two words, each individual, has got to go. You can either say each student or individual students. Finally, I want to look at this category of redundancy. And this is one that is important, especially in the revision process, because it involves our sentence's grammar. For instance, uh, in the sentence, when tame animals are cornered, they can be dangerous. The pronoun they really does extend the sentence unnecessarily and I think dilutes its impact. When you could write, when cornered, tame animals can be dangerous. That's much stronger because it is not diluted or strung out by that unneeded pronoun. As always, thank you very much for watching. If these tips to help, please be sure to check out this video that contains the first five tips. And don't forget, of course, to hit that like button. That really does help when you do that. Okay, see you in the next video.